We in America are immigrants, or the children of immigrants. We are one people, but a people welded from many nations and races. Through his pictures, he took a stand by exposing another way of thinking to the people of America. Jacob Rees took a stance when he challenged the role of a journalist by advocating for social reform, sharing his knowledge through photographs along with writing to improve tenement life, and by participating in investigations of immigrants that resided in the slums of New York City. The late 1860s to 1870s was a period of reconstruction after the Civil War. However, there were technological and industrial endeavors that would have a profound impact on the environment and public health. This time period is often referred to as the Gilded Age. In his book, The Gilded Age, Mark Twain refers to the era as a period of U.S. history in the 1870s known for political and financial corruption. The word gilded represents the practice of a common metal being very thinly coated with gold. It represents how America was viewed as a country full of wealth and opportunity, but in reality, it was held up by the nation's poor. Labor was in dire need in order to fuel the emerging industrial economy that the United States thrived on. Luckily, by the end of the 1800s, people began to immigrate to the United States in great numbers due to more convenient travel and issues back home. A small island in the upper New York Bay called Ellis Island soon became one of the largest gateways for immigrants into America. Between 1880 and 1919, 17 million immigrants passed through the port of New York. New York City soon became the nation's most important center of trade, industry, finance, and communication. Liberty lifts her lamp beside the golden door. Give me your tired, your poor, she calls. Your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. However, many people thought that the immigrants were going to ruin American ideals. With this belief, there are many attempts to curb immigration. Due to these changes, there is a profound reorganization in work, transportation, and housing in New York City. In an expanding city like New York, there are too few houses to support a growing population. To counteract the limited space available, property owners began constructing double tenements. A tenement is a rented or leased dwelling that could house up to three or more independent families. These infamous rear house tenements were built alongside regular tenements, with as little as 40 inches of space between them. Poor water quality, filth, and vermin caused typhus and cholera outbreaks to be common, as were high rates of child mortality and tuberculosis. One in five children died. There were so many deaths in rear house tenements that they were often referred to as slaughterhouses. At the time, three-fourths of New York's population lived in these conditions. Problem. You have just thousands and thousands of people crammed into these poor neighborhoods that are called slums, living in tenements, which are essentially apartment buildings, but with many of them without any running water, uh, indoor plumbing and so forth. So it's a real crisis. By mid-century, New York had among the worst health statistics in the nation, and by 1888, New York City's Lower East Side was considered the most densely populated area on Earth. These immigrants, originally looking for a better life, were forced to reside in horrid tenements. Among these immigrants was a man named Jacob Rees. Born in Reby, Denmark, Reese's dream was to become a carpenter in Copenhagen, but due to a lack of job opportunities, he decided to immigrate to New York City in 1870 at the age of 21. As a young new immigrant, alone and homeless, it was difficult for Reese to find work in New York. After three years of living in America, Reese found employment as a reporter in New York City. He was then assigned to report with police headquarters on Mulberry Street and discovered his life's work. This street was one of the worst slum areas in the city. Shocked at the conditions he saw, Reese began to take a stand by publishing stories about New York slums as a reporter. However, he soon realized that words alone could not describe the horror that he saw.
His wish came true. While reading the morning paper, he saw a notice about an advance in the field of photography. There was a new chemical called flash powder that made it possible to take flash pictures in complete darkness. Rather than blame the poor for their own problems, he took a stand by claiming their environment played a crucial role in their struggles. His goal was to draw attention to this, but most of all, he was concerned about the children of the tenements. Reese's photos were an undeniable medium of proof to support his demands for social reform. He began by showing his photographs into lantern slides to show middle-class church groups and civic organizations. At first, people cried and fainted at what they saw. Reese's photos were an undeniable medium of proof to support his demands for social reform. In order to keep spreading the word, Reese was asked to publish his first book, How the Other Half Lives, in 1890. Not only did his book describe the many awful conditions of the slums in New York City, it also provided shocking visual proof. Long ago, it was said that one half of the world does not know how the other half lives. It did not know because it did not care. The half that was on top cared little for the struggles and less for the fate of those who were underneath, so long it was able to hold them there and keep its own seat. There came a time when the discomfort and crowding below was so great and the consequent upheaval so violent that it was no longer an easy thing to do, and then the upper half fell to inquiring what was the matter. The majority of the public was appalled when they saw the conditions of the tenements. Word began to spread, causing how the other half lived to rise to fame. His work continued to shock his middle-class audience into also taking a stand as social justice and economic reform. So that's why Jacob Rees is so important, because he really literally throws light on this problem, and, and it kind of ups the fear and anxiety and, and concern about the problem of overcrowded housing and really prompts people to start thinking about what can we do, how can we fix this problem. Occasionally, there are common folks who argue that poverty was caused by individual and moral weakness, but he was determined to take a stand by awakening the conscience of the country, and he did it. After the success of his first book, Reese started publishing more and more books about reformation within the tenements. He has written a total of 16 books. Even though at the time, Jacob Reese was mostly considered to be a moral saint, recently there has been discussion about the way Reese sometimes refers to different ethnicity groups in a derogatory manner. In all of his books, Reese tends to portray different ethnicity groups in what today we would call racist, but at the time, normal. Many different social norms have changed throughout time, and it is important to understand the type of environment Reese was living in. One person who grew to be a large fan of Reese's work was Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt was the New York City Police Commissioner at the time. He came to Reese, offering his assistance in trying to take a stand about the tenement issues. Using his powers as a police commissioner, Roosevelt promised Reese that he would pay close attention in the slums to reduce the crime rate. In 1901, Theodore Roosevelt became the 26th President of the United States. As the president, Roosevelt appointed a tenement house commission, which led to the creation of the Tenement House Department. During his years in office, Roosevelt refers to Jacob Reese as the best American he ever knew. He pioneered the use of social documentary as a technique used to advocate and inspired many social documentary photographers to come, including the work of Lewis Hine and Dorothea Lange. All of these people and more have used photography as a way to take a stand against social issues in the world. Using pictures to convey messages is still an extremely powerful tool in society today. Due to Reese's effort, journalists began to see themselves as investigators. The profession of journalism can now be viewed from sociological, artistic, and political perspectives. This prompted a new field of journalism called muckraking. A muckraker was a term commonly used during this time period for someone who was a journalist that wrote about social reform. Jacob Reese is considered to be one of the first muckrakers that inspired a revolution. When Jacob Rees took a stand, he awakened the public's eyes to all the issues surrounding tenements and impoverished immigrants. Jacob Rees took a stand when he used photography to expose these problems and by teaching the world to not ignore them. His legacy now continues to inspire people to take a stand by picking up a camera to capture photos that ignite revolutions.